What's going on, my beautiful babes, my buttercups? Auntie Cuckoo's got another doozy for you. This is like one of the craziest stories I like know personally. I have a few other ones that like are my top, like I have like a top 10, and this is one of them. Do you guys remember the nanny killers, that couple that murdered their nanny back in London um, in 2017? If you don't remember, let me refresh your memory, because this is a crazy freaking story. But before I give you all the deets as usual, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button, like, share, do your thing, chicken wings. I hate wearing these glasses because um, of the ring light. <laughs> um, but the reason I was wearing them is before I get into all the details, you guys know I'm like super accident prone. I just showed you guys a couple weeks ago and me all busted up. Well, today I got hit in the face of filing cabinets. I have a goose egg and a big bruise and a cut here. So that's why I was going to try and wear the glasses, but then it like reflects weird. So anyways, that what happened there. <laughs> so let's get into this story, right? Cuckoo, let's do it. Anyways, also, I hope everyone had a very happy and safe Memorial Day. Thank you to all the loved ones and people that are left from the amazing people that have served for us. And thank you to them, of course, always. But, you know, to the loved ones as well, because, like, it, it's more than just that. Anyways, that's a whole other video, right? Get into the story, Cuckoo. I apologize, but, you know, Memorial Day, it hits a heart. Like, thank you so much. Um, anyways, so... Here we go, the nanny killers. Let me break it down for you guys and give you all the deets as usual. So I'm gonna like give you give it to you as it is. So Sabrina Coudier, and bear with me if I don't pronounce these names correctly. Like I said, it's London and France and like all over the place. It's, it's not America or Canada, and those are my places. So sorry if my don't pronounce correctly. Forgive me, please. All right, so Sabrina Coudier and um. Oh, Sam Mendur, um, he goes by Sam and Sabrina. They're like longtime lovers. I see stuff they're married. I see stuff they're not married. Whatever the case is, he is pretty much her bitch. Sabrina Gutierrez, she like runs a shit and she goes off and she dates other men. And when shit goes south and they break up with her for being a psycho, uh, she runs back to quote unquote Sam, who is Sam, however you say it, but he goes by, you know, Sam. So she runs back to him and he always picks up the pieces. So, Sabrina Coudier, she has two kids, um, you know, supposedly she's like a fashion de designer and stuff. In 2011, she meets a man named Mark Walton. Now, Mark Walton is one of the original founders of the, like, a very popular Irish um, boy band called uh, Boy Zone. I don't want to say anything wrong, but I hate looking down at my paper, but Boy Zone, I believe, is called, anyways, up and coming. So, she's, like, you know, hanging out, and she's getting that glitz and glam, and she's loving it, and things are going good. And, like, he, I guess it's even said that, like, he was, like, it was love at first sight. She's amazing. But then he finds out she's freaking crazy. Psycho. Like, um, he would go do something, and she would be like, I know you are sleeping with male prostitutes. And he's like, yo, like, what? Then she would go to his home and in his own home, she would, like, set up, like, surveillance cameras to spy on him and stuff. Like, it got real crazy to the point that he was like, I can't deal with this. I'm out. I cannot deal with your chaos. So he left her crazy, but I'm trying to, like, watch my words. I apologize. But anyway, so he left her because she was a psycho. Um, so he left her. And what did she do? Of course, she runs right back to Sam. You know, like I said, I don't know if they're really married as contradicting stories but either way it's a long time relationship anytime stuff goes bad she always runs back to sam so things go bad with mark and he's like you know uh, you're beautiful you're great you're wonderful but you are crazy you're accusing me of sleeping with male prostitutes like crazy stuff you gotta go can't deal with this so she goes back to sam and i don't know if i said before but she has two small kids so she goes back to sam and they're raising their two small kids together but while this is happening she is still continuing to stalk, harass, follow, and make, like, calling police, making complaints against Mark Walton. Stuff like, he sexually abused my cat. And to this day still, I'm pretty sure she didn't even have a cat. But she called the police and was like, my ex, Mark Walton, you know, who's, uh, you know, founder of the Irish band, uh, Boyzone, he's over here sexually abusing the cat I don't have. Yeah, like those are the reports, crazy stuff, saying that, you know, he was a pedophile and then claiming that he's stalking her and following her. And that's not what happening. It's her. So anyways, her and Sam are living out this life and she's telling Sam, you know, like he's stalking me, he's following me. Well, she's the one doing it to her ex, Mark Walton. Um, 
Sam starts believing her. Obviously, I mean, he's already twisted that he's already heard, like, constant rebound for the last 20 years, whatever the case is. But anyways, she starts, like, convincing him, like, you know, he's following me. So, she gets so busy with stalking Mark, her ex, that she needs to hire a nanny to help her with her two small children. Brings us in the amazing, beautiful, so innocent, and wanting to just grow beautiful girl, Sophie Leonette, I believe is how you say it. She lived in France. Like I said, this takes place in London. Um, but she lived in France. She was 20 years old at the time and was looking, you know, to improve her English and to, you know, go out on her own and like prove to her parents and everyone like, I can do it on my own. I got this. So she was looking for a nanny job. It's called like an au pair. God, my family be so embarrassed that I can't pronounce that. But anyways, so a nanny job pretty much. She finds you know, Sabrina Coutier, who is looking for a nanny in London and is like, this is amazing. It's a beautiful home. Like I said, I mean, this lady has been hanging out with celebs and stuff. So she takes the job. It's going great in the beginning. Sophie Leonette, you know, it's 2021 first job. She's in, you know, in London versus where she's from in France. She's watching these kids. She's like idolizing Sabrina. You know, she's hanging out with glitz and glam and a designer and she dated, um, Mark Walton, you know, like a lot going on. And this is like a dream job for her. Well, shit goes south super quick on this poor little girl. <clears throat> you know, like, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm too harsh and don't like think of the victims too much, but that's not the case at all. I'm just here to give you the deeds. I'm always thinking of the victims, but anyways, she literally begins to think in her twisted mind, just like she thought Mark is chasing her down and hunting her down and stalking her, that Sophie, her new nanny, who has been like working her butt off for her, is a spy of Mark's, her ex-boyfriend's, and is, you know, trying to destroy her family and begins telling her, you know, stand and husband, stand and boyfriend, Sam, who's always there, the rebound, rebound guy, that, you know, she's she's poisoning you. She's giving you drugs at night. And he starts believing it. I don't know. This lady's got some serious mind control, I guess. Like, thank God she got arrested when she did because she'd be running a small cult. So she convinces Sam that Sophie is a spy for Mark, who Sophie is, like I said, from France, a nanny. She didn't know anyone. She never met Mark. But in Sabrina's mind, she's like, yep, he's he's doing her and they're they're molesting my children and they're spying on us. They're trying to destroy our family. So in 2016, this is all going down, and um, like I said, Sabrina's making the claims that, you know, Mark is, you know, molesting her cat that we don't even know exists, and begins accusing so Sophie, sorry, Sophie of, you know, being a spy and doing these different things. She'd already confiscated her passport and all of her identification and stuff. She starts not giving her food, um, slowly starts, <clears throat> you know, uh shunning her and treating her like a slave rather than her working her 40 hours. She was working 80 hours and she was more like a maid of the house than just a nanny. Um, and then it turned from the starvation and like just the nasty treatment to actual physical abuse. Um, then it got to a point where Sabrina had convinced Sam, like I said, that Sophie was a spy for Mark and was trying to destroy their family and was a pet. Uh, you know, a pedophile and all this crazy chaos that she came up in her head that they're literally beating Sophie. Um, they're not feeding her. They're not paying her. So Sophie has no connection to those outside worlds. She's in another, you know, she's in, she's in freaking London. She's from France. She doesn't know anyone first time out of the house trying to prove that she can make it on her own. Like we all did when we, you know, turned 18, 19, 20. And, Things were going great, and now it's down south, and she's got no phone, she's got no passport, she's got no money, they're not paying her, they're beating her, they're not feeding her. All this is going on, and the whole time, Sabrina is constantly interrogating her, I know that you're spying for Mark, I know that you're doing this for my ex, I know that, you know, if you just admit it, if you just admit it, Sophie, we'll let you go. That's what they're telling her. And Sophie's like, no, no, I didn't, I'm not, as they're beating her, and as things are getting worse and worse and worse. So this continues on. And the more she denies, the worse the torture and abuse gets. So it is said that there's about six weeks of documentation on their phones of the torture and abuse. So it continues on. And the last picture that's shown of Sophie while she was like known to be alive is heartbreaking. I mean, it literally shows a 20-year-old, beautiful, innocent, young girl 
as as a show. I mean, she is completely emaciated, skin and bones, sickly. I mean, looks just shattered. I mean, it's a heart heartbreaking picture. I mean, aside from just like looking like uh, completely abused, she literally just looks like heartbroken and shattered. Like I feel so. Anyways, um, focus, focus. No emotions. Um. So, anyways. This continues on finally after this is going on and on. I mean, they are at some points even threatening. If you do not confess that you are banging my ex and that you have taken my children for him to abuse and that you're a child abuser, then, you know, we will inflict more pain on you. We will rape you. We will send you to prison. And she's a young girl. She doesn't know. She's already been, been being tortured and, I mean, has nothing. So she eventually finally does confess. And is like, okay, after six weeks, mind you, right? Did I say that? After six weeks of this torture and like, it's like 12 hour interrogations of Sabrina screaming at her. You're lying. You're lying. I know you're doing it. Why do you keep lying? We'll murder you and your family if you don't admit to it. Like, could you imagine? No food, no sleep. I mean, insane. On top of the abuse, physical, mental Anyways, finally, Sophie is like, because Sabrina said the whole time, if you just confess to this, we'll let you go. I'll give you your stuff and you can go. So Sophie finally is like, yes, yes, I'm sleeping with Mark Walton and we abused your child or whatever she confesses to on video. Sabrina's recording this. Like I said, she'd been recording the six weeks of abuse. She makes her record the confession as well so she can use it later. So finally, Sophie admits to it. Well, you know, I mean, they'd already done so much damage to this woman. There was no way she was going to let her go. So they finish her off by continuing to beat her and pretty much waterboard her. They put her, I mean, waterboarding's different, but like they literally put her in the bathtub and would drown her. And then when she wasn't breathing anymore, pull her out and like kind of resuscitate her and put her back in. This went on for hours and hours until finally on September, uh, I want to make sure I have the date right. September, oh no. September 19th, 2017, Sophie finally died. You know, her body couldn't take it anymore and she died. So Sabrina's reaction, do you want to know, was to bang Sam right next to Sabrina's dead, uh, to, I'm sorry, to Sophie's dead body. That's what they did. Like, are you, are you kidding me? Talk about twisted. That's why I told you one of the craziest stories I know. Like, it's insane. So they end up having sex and then Sabrina is like, put her in her own suitcase. They put her, you know, battered, beaten, tortured, frail, sick sad body into her own suitcase left it there for a day while they decided what to do next day Sabrina told Sam you're gonna burn the body take care of that I'm gonna take the kids to park check you on the flip side so that's what they did Sabrina packed up the kids the two kids went to the park for the day and Sam was like all right I'm gonna burn this up let me throw some sticks and stuff around this suitcase light it on fire in my backyard in the middle of the day and I'm going to throw a few pieces of chicken on the grill. No one will know the difference. Okay, I've never smelled a burnt body before or like, you know, a corpse and stuff. But like, uh, from what I hear, it's like something you'll never forget. You're going to throw a few pieces of chicken on the grill in the middle of the afternoon in like your backyard and think no one's going to notice. But he did. That's what happened. I'm telling you. So he's burning this like big pile up. Now it's smoking everywhere and smelling horrific because it's burning a body. And he's sitting by his grill, turning over, you know, like three pieces of chicken, pretending like he's having a barbecue. Neighbors are like, what is this horrific smell? Where is all this, where is all this smoke coming from? And they call the fire department. Firemen could show up and they're like, what's happening? And Sam's like, oh, I'm just having a barbecue all by myself. Just hanging out, having a barbecue. And they're like, uh, okay, I see you grilling a couple pieces of chicken. What is this smell in this big pile over here? He's like, I'm burning a sheep. That's what you tell him. Don't worry about that. I'm burning a sheep. And the firemen are, like, looking around, and they're like, um, we can see a hand sticking out. That's not what's happening. So go ahead and put your hands behind your bag. We gotta call the popos. You is done. So, but yeah, this mofo was really like, oh, I'm just doing a barbecue. Oh, I'm just burning my dead sheep. Don't worry about that. Anyways, like, that's how, like, I don't know, delusional and twisted this all was. I don't know. But, yeah, so the firemen obviously were not fooled by this, and were like, popos, we got an issue. They arrest Sam. They take him down to the police station. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I was just barbecuing for my family and burning a sheep. I don't know. Sabrina finally comes home 
from the park with her kids, and the police obviously start questioning her, and she's like, what? Huh? What do you mean? What happened? Oh, my God. You mean to tell me my husband, he wasn't burning a sheep? I thought he was going to make us some chicken, and then we were going to have a sheep or something. It was a body. And they're like, yeah, well, where'd you think your nanny went? She's like, oh, she got upset, and she left a few weeks ago. Really, Sabrina? Really? So when they arrest them, obviously, they confiscate their phones. On the phones is all six weeks of the torture. They recorded the torture sessions. I think in total it was like at least eight hours at a time or something. Like eight hours of torture and abuse recorded on their phones, which clearly shows Sam and Sabrina both abusing and torturing poor Sophie. Like, insane. So needless to say, they are both charged with and let me make sure I tell it correctly. Um, murder and perverted the, perverting the ju- the course of justice. Both were sentenced to 30 years to life. Um, Sam and Serena both were like, um, we would like to appeal that for a minimum sentence. And the court's like, yeah, um, we're going to have to deny that. You guys are psychopaths. We're going to have to deny that. And then Sam was like, um, all right, well, I've got another appeal because I feel like, um, During the whole trial, the jurors weren't sure, and they sent the judge a note, so I feel like it was, let me get it correct, he claimed conviction was unsafe, and the judge was like, yeah, denied, you're a psychopath, denied, so that's the story on Sabrina and Osiam slash Sam, um, the nanny killers chaos like i told you i've always got a doozy for you um this one of the craziest stories ever um everything that i've been able to find and see sabrina was not only like an amazing person and so sweet and so kind and just trying to do what so many of us do you know we turn 18 or 19 20 whenever it is that you decide to leave home and you just want to prove like i can do this whether it's you going to college on your own and like i can do my classes i can live on my own i can do it or it's you know, going and getting a job, whatever it was. She was just trying to prove herself and thought she had landed it. She was going to London. She was going to learn more English. She was going to work hard for this amazing family. Like I said, I mean, Sabrina had money and, you know, lived a good lifestyle at some point in time with all the glitz and glam and this and that. Um, Obviously, before she was arrested for being a psychopath. But, um, you know, she thought this was like an awesome opportunity. And as they, like, asked around to the neighbors and everybody else, everyone was like, Sub- so, I keep saying Sabrina, and she's a scumbag. Sophie, I'm sorry, Sophie, was an amazing nanny. She not only was a nanny, but, like, literally worked like a maid, worked long hours, and did everything for them. Clean, waited on them hand and foot. Was amazing. Until they, you know, started thinking she was a spy, and... I don't know, I guess paranoia, schizophrenia, psycho jealousy. I don't know what you want to call it. To me, it's just sick and twisted. But um, it was even said that Sophie had a better relationship with Sabrina's two kids than she did. Like, that when they went out, before things started getting real crazy, that fam, like family and friends that would see them out, it looked like the kids belonged to Sophie more so than Sabrina. Because I'm sure before Sophie got there, she used her sick, twisted stuff on her kids, you know? Like, that shit doesn't just pop out of nowhere. She was obviously twisted long before that. Like I said, she said that Mark sexually abused a cat that we're not even sure she even had. Like, ugh. Anyways, how's that for a doozy, you guys? Thanks so much for checking in. I appreciate you. Um, I know I'm on live right now, but if you are checking this out on YouTube, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click that bell for new video notifications. I appreciate you guys. Stay safe. Stay kind. Do good things. I will check you on the flip side. Love yas. Keep being amazing.